uh, no say. So like we said, I'm gonna, uh, I just remembered that we're going to record it, okay? Fantastic, that's no problem at all. So what are the kids' names? Uh, my kids' names are Kat and Nolan. That's uh, Catherine is in high school, so a little bit younger than your ladies, and uh, my son's in eighth grade. Oh, good. Yeah, they're older. <laughs> I, I don't know why I imagined them as kids. Maybe because I saw a picture of you with, with I think, uh, Nolan. Maybe I think there's a picture of you together. Oh, Can I'm you... sure there are. Yeah, that's about the only thing I do online. Social media is stuff with my kids. <laughs> and um, when I made these videos 10 years ago, they were much smaller, oh, obviously. So, <laughs> yeah, they age as well. I would like to share the story you told me with the girls about how, because of a sick student, you 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 actually videotaped the entire. I think I, I, it's it's a yeah. marvelous coincidence because if you hadn't, we wouldn't have come to this point where we have you today. So basically, he had one of the students sick, and that's why he decided to film the lectures for him. And then he decided that okay, I'll start filming all my my classes, and that's how we got the amazing lectures on or the flies. <laughs> And also, I watched all his videos on Macbeth, all his videos on 1984, all his videos on Lord of the Flies. I'm a big fan, so. <laughs> You're my number one fan. <laughs> and awesome. After, <laughs> after this class, not your only fan. I'm going to make sure they're all, <laughs> they're all subscribing to the channel. Yeah, it's, it's fate that we came together because I, as, as uh, your professor is speaking, I had a student who was very stressed out and had to pull out of school for a while. And we were just starting Shakespeare. And some of them had only had Shakespeare one other time in their life. And I was thinking, this girl's going to miss two weeks. She'll show up at the act five at the end of Macbeth. And she was, there's no way that she'd be able to keep up. So yeah, I just started making the videos. And then my uh, obsessiveness took over and I just did all of them. And then I did them for all my classes. And it's really uh, this, I'll be honest, this is the, I've gotten comments through the years on the videos, you know, thanking me and it's very sweet. Um, but this is, uh, this has been the highlight of all of that work and effort and filming and editing and posting um, in order to, uh, to meet you all. So I'm, I'm extremely honored um, and uh, I'm very blessed. So Doing this has been a, a treat for me. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope. We are already enjoying it. So uh, <laughs> Dr. Mochir, the head of the department, is on his way. Okay. Okay. So if you'd like to sip some water or, you know, get yourself ready, we'll start. That works. <laughs> <clears throat> it's funny. I I had to dig my book out. This is my original book that I taught with, um, you know, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, I have so many annotations, pages are falling out, you know, of it. I had to dig it out and start rereading it. My front cover was falling apart, so I had to tape it. I don't know if you can see how shiny it is. Um, but uh, this has had a lot of wear and tear. And in the videos, when you see me reading from a book, it is this book. So it's kind of wow. like a historical artifact, I guess. Um, and I'm so amazed I found it. It was in the first box I looked at, which was amazing to me. <clears throat> lucky us, huh? <laughs> well, I'm lucky I didn't have to find a new book and start drawing and writing in it. So all my notes are still here. So it really helped uh, remember and jumpstart the mind a little bit. When I was a student and we took the novel, the book was very, very, very small, like literally small. And mm. it made my eyes hurt. So I decided that with my students, I'd make it an A4 book so that they can, oh. they can. Nice. Read. Yeah, because I had to yeah. wear glasses after the novel class. So now it's, I don't want them to go through the same trouble. Gotcha. And, and there's room for them. I keep telling them, and I hope you would encourage them to keep taking notes while reading, to keep asking questions. Oh, yeah. That's what literature is, right? For sure. Right on. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, when I got a question for you, uh, or actually everybody, if you watch the videos, I have a tendency to, uh, if I remember correctly, say, yeah, I'll go to this page or on this page, this paragraph that uh, I guess that only works for if you have the exact same edition as I do. 
did that cause any problems following along? Uh, the difference in pages isn't a lot. I think there are like seven page gap, but it's like uh, I advise them to read the chapter first and then watch your video because it makes it easier to find the certain points you discuss. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah, I always read first before you look at other notes and other online stuff. Otherwise, it's not going to sink in for sure. Yeah. It's just my opinion. Would you like to ask the girls? And I know, like, it feels like we already started the lecture, and I, I'm sorry, but uh, usually people, right. uh, people on the other line of the conference don't usually come on time, and we usually have technical issues. So it's been okay. like, that's why it's a miracle that we're on time, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> that's why I think the head of the department isn't here on time, because he probably thought it would not start until, like, 10 minutes after mm -hmm. he started. Yeah, so I, I apologize on his behalf. That's, hey, it's no problem. No problem. I'm a, I'm awake, so hey, whenever. Yeah, I feel sorry about that too. You know, no. Sorry, sorry, but excited because although you know we made you wake up early, at least you know we get to hear from you. Hey, you guys are worth it. Thank you. Is there anything you would like to know about the girls before we begin? Oh my gosh. Um. Yeah. Now you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, I know, right? Gosh. <laughs> Uh, how, how old are you, are you guys, uh, so here in, in, in America, it's, you know, you graduate high school, uh, our secondary school, usually about 18 years old. And then you go to post secondary, which is college 19, 20, 21, 22. Is that roughly this, the same age group that you're, that you guys are? Yeah. All right. I guess the main question, do you guys, have you seen Star Wars? Can you see my Darth Vader painting back here? My buddy made that. And I have, I have so many other, well, I don't want to walk around my house, with my camera and shake it, but uh, I am a huge Star Wars fan. Um, so that's something I actually, I'd like to, if you saw a lot of the videos, I like to talk about movies and other books and tv shows as they relate to uh the stories um i like to try to, well which those are probably dated if they were 10 years ago so hopefully i made movies that made sense um you know whether it's bringing up star wars or harry potter or whatever else so um yeah i guess i wonder if, and i and this is putting you on the spot but with some of my references in the in the videos were they hard to uh, make connections with um being from a, a different country i think they were relatable oh so dr mushir ahmed he's the hello bob how's it going hello. hey see very you. well good good hello. to see you thanks a lot for offering to talk to our students here it's my pleasure delight. it's a great delight to have you here and uh it, i'm looking forward to listening to your uh, talk and uh, conversation lecture on, on this very important topic. Oh, wonderful. Week. Thank you. I hope I don't disappoint. So <laughs> thank you. I'm sure you already have already <laughs> made, an, made an impression on our students. Um, on behalf of myself and on behalf of all my students or my uh, colleagues and students in the English department here at Islamic University, we warmly thank you uh, for offering to talk to uh, us and uh, uh, just a brief background about the university and about the English department. The Islamic University is the leading university in the Gaza Strip and among the top three universities in Palestine. And uh, over 80,000, 85,000 graduates, students graduated from the university. And wow. um, sort of the jewel of the crown is the English department here in the Islamic University of Gaza. We graduate students in literature, and in education and also in translation, uh, majoring in these three different uh, uh, areas. Um, and uh, basically we are very honored to have you uh, here. Mm. The teaching staff here at, at, uh, in the English department graduated from different universities in America, uh, Britain, uh, Australia, India. I myself graduated from Vermont. Um, uh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> A Fulbright scholar in from St. Michael's College. I did my master's degree in ESOL, 
Uh, that was like some 20 years ago. Hey, and, great. Uh, it's always a uh, fresh, uh, 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 fresh air to talk to colleagues in the States. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so well, we uh, miss you. We miss you. Come back. Visit. Uh, I hope at some point I will. <laughs> so uh, I thanks a lot again. I couldn't uh, thank you enough for uh, offering to talk our students. And hopefully you will provide insights on on this interesting uh, uh, work of uh, literary work and students get to benefit from you a lot. And hopefully this is the beginning of um, a sort of an ongoing collaboration with you and colleagues from the US. Uh, and the great. English department engages all the time with uh, different activities, extracurricular and curricular activities, hoping to bridge um, you know, distances and offer fresh perspectives on different academic and literary uh, issues. So thanks yeah. a lot. And hey, my pleasure. look forward to hearing you again. Great, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, all the best. Um, Mr. Bob, he, he likes to be called Bob, full name is Robert uh, Oldmeyer. Uh, he has taught secondary English for 18 years. He's a graduate of Indiana University with a degree in journalism and a master's in secondary education. He taught theater appreciation at Indiana University at Fort Wayne for one year. He's a father of two. He's an award-winning playwright and actor uh, when he's not teaching. And I think we noticed that in his videos, he performs what he you know, explains. Uh, he enjoys baseball and Star Wars more than it's, uh, it's probably healthy to do. Uh, he also uh, started the Star Wars uh, podcast, the new Star Wars shows that have been, uh, to analyze the new Star Wars shows that have been released. Um, his YouTube channel has amassed over 5,000 subscribers and is closing in on 1 million views. For oh, Blizzard. correction, it did. It went over a million two days okay. ago. Yeah, and I think we know where that million came from, right? Yeah, you know what? It did say Palestine. <laughs> okay, good, good. So we're on the back. Okay, the floor is yours. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Uh, would you like me to begin? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Okay, fantastic. Again, thank you. Uh, we were speaking, you know, a little while ago. So again, I'm very honored. Um, and uh, I, I've been looking forward to this. You know, at first when I got an email, I think it was just last week about this. I wasn't quite sure. Well, am I being catfished? Is this real? And uh, I told my kids about it and they dove into the internet and found all this information. I'm like, okay, I'll respond. And um, no, I was very flattered. You know, the, and again, as I was saying, this is a book that I taught a number of years ago. Um, I think probably, well, those were 10 years ago and I probably taught it only once since then. Uh, in summer school for some kids. And um, it's always one of those stories that, um, you know, I don't like it cold here, here in Indiana. Uh, this is where we're at. It's, you know, 15 degrees outside and I just hate it. And I always think warm weather. And so the tropical island aspect of this book never really intimidated me. Um, but the savagery and everything kind of does. Um, I really putting together my notes for everyone. I really wish that um, you could get through the book or at least further than where we're at, because there's so many things that I would love to see your reaction to, um, you know, at the very end. And I, I'm really trying to be spoiler free. I don't want to ruin it because I'm so jealous of, of you guys. And I truly am anybody that goes through, um, literature or movies for the first time, you have this reaction that, um, is unfiltered. It's unexplained. It's something that um, can't be duplicated. Now, you can read it a second time and still enjoy it. You know, you can watch Star Wars again and, oh no, Darth Vader is Luke's dad. You knew that already. If you spoil it, oh, there's a spoiler if you haven't seen the movie from 1980. Um, but, um, you know, it's one of those things that um, you guys are going to go and enjoy, well, hopefully enjoy, but go on this journey. Um, that Golding has painted and for the first time, and you'll never have a first time again with this book. Um, and so it's really important. Um, I'm going to just vouch for this book in general, but uh, academically, it's so important to, to attempt to read the material uh, on your own without any, any help, any online uh, websites. Um, there's one we talk about spark notes, 
uh, is really helpful. Um, but uh, all of that should be secondary. Um, it should be a peripheral learning um, uh, opportunity. Uh, and so when I teach Shakespeare, when I teach novels, I always say just read it on your own and then go and check your your online resources. Go and check uh, the little quizzes they have and take them. It takes just a few extra seconds to do a couple minutes, maybe. And how well did you do? And if you wow, I didn't get any of that. Well, go back and look at it again and try it again. And that's going to be your third exposure to the materials. And it will have to have sunk in a little bit more. Um, some people are uh, might be quicker and pick up on this stuff um, easier. And that's something that uh, everybody's just going to have to do their own thing. But I strongly suggest doing it on your own, because if you're just stuck reading summaries, you will not care about the story. It's impossible because they're just giving you like a, a shot by shot of what happens. There is no intimacy of characters and connection. Um, you just truly won't care and it won't make an impression on you. Um, and it's going to be hard to write about and to test about. Um, and with a story like this, with the journey and especially the last two, three chapters, there's just so much uh, to talk about. Um, and if you are, uh, behind and you're always trying to get caught up and looking for shortcuts, it's, it's just never going to work out. Um, you just might skirt by and pass and then it move on, but you're just missing out on such a rich, uh, opportunity, especially, especially with this novel. Um, so that's just my preaching. So I'm done preaching. So that no more of that, um, but to start off with the book, William Golding wrote this. Uh, I'm not quite sure of the year that it was. I think it was like mid mid 50s or so. Um, but you have to put a, um, an understanding of the time period, uh, the culture. Um, you know, when Jack says, you know, we're English, we're the best at everything. Um, that's a, a belief, you know, that, that it's founded on a few hundred years of uh, imperialism control around the world. Um, you know, in the, you know, in the 1800s with Queen Victoria, you know, they were the biggest empire in the world. There was a saying that uh, the sun never sets on the British Empire. Uh, this is back then. And that's because their territories were all around the world and it was always sunny. You know, it never went down and never diminished. Um, but slowly, you know, different of uh, their territories uh, started to seek their independence. Um, you know, India, uh, <laughs> America. That was kind of a big one. You know, um, that takes a big uh, chunk away from them. Um, but war, World War One, um, you know, they call it the Great War, you know, in the, in the, the 19 teens, um, you know, it, it killed about a million British um, people. And so that they you know, for an island, you know, the, they're, well, I don't want to say small because of the British Empire, but, you know, it, that was a massive generational uh, handicap for them that going forward, they, they lost a lot of people and just diminished. And then there was the depression that hit economically. Oh, and then Hitler's going crazy and starting World War II, and they're barely licking their wounds from World War I. Um, you know, they didn't have the, the power to, to reclaim their superiority. Um, so that mindset that Jack has of we're British, we're best at everything, maybe a little while ago, but you can see that that's the schooling and that's the, um, the expectation. So um, with this being written in the 50s, you know, it's, it's after World War II, um, whether it's supposed to take place in the 50s or right after World War II, you know, they talk about the atomic bomb, um, you know, they're being evacuated because of bombing in their city. Um, and this is something that drove me nuts. Um, I don't know if it's a plot hole. I don't know what happened here, but they're in England. Okay. And you're from that's on your side of the world. They're on Eng in England and they're evacuating a bunch of school kids. They get shot out of the sky and they land in the Pacific ocean halfway around the world on a tropical Island. That seems strange to me. I didn't understand why they were, so you flew over America and didn't stop, or did you go the other way and didn't stop India, China, Japan, something? Well, Japan might not have been good if this was during World War II, supposedly. I don't know. But 
that was always something I'm just like, I don't know, just there's a thing just say in especially movies when they just get crazy. Like there was a I don't know if you have I don't know if you've seen the Fast and the Furious movies, but, the uh, you know, the Vin Diesel rock movies, you know, the race cars. Uh, well, this last one, they had a, a they were out in outer space in a car. I mean, you just have to suspend disbelief. It's just ridiculous. It's not meant to be analyzed. And so with this story, um, that's one of the things I'm like, okay, don't think about it. They're just in the Pacific Ocean. Just forget it. Don't overthink it. They're just in the Pacific Ocean. But it truly is a, a social experiment as to uh, what, um, what would happen with this society that's considered the best of everything. And really, it's not just this particular society, but it's humanity. What would happen if we put, excuse me, put a bunch of people on an island? trap them there what would happen how long would their societal norms and um you know uh, well i don't know democracy if that's your if your thing you know how long would that take uh, uh um, stick around would it stick around permanently would they be able to instantly build up a civilization or would it devolve into into chaos and anarchy how long would that take what would be the steps and oh you know what what would make this better let's make them children and the thing that you just have to keep thinking about, um, and I forget this, not at the start of the story, but as we go chapters by chapters and it gets more intense, um, these are kids. They, the little ones that they talk about, those are six-year-olds. I don't know if you guys have any brothers or sisters or nephews, cousins that are six. That's here. That's kindergarten. You know, I mean, they're teeny tiny. And those are the little one, little ones. Um, and the oldest, Jack and Ralph, uh, they're like, 12 and so that's fifth sixth grade over here and they are making these uh adult decisions and in the first few chapters they do a pretty good job of um trying to uh keep order and they make some choices like okay good job nice okay well this might work their their piggy needs to make a list so that they can know who all is there okay that's kind of a mature thing to think about. All right, good job. Hey, the conch, only whoever talks, whoever holds the conch shell, you know, they can talk. Okay, they're making, they're making some choices. Um, and so as things become uh, more chaotic, uh, maybe more violent, I'm not going to spoil anything, um, you know, then uh, you, I kind of forget, you know, all the way up until the last two or three pages and don't skip ahead. Don't skip ahead. Um, you don't think of them as children. If you truly read it, by the end, you you forget that they're kids until the last few pages. And then you're like, oh, my gosh. Wow. And this is one of those moments and reveals that I'm jealous that you're going through this for the first time um, because it truly is a journey. And, uh, you know, I would love to know what you guys think of it when you truly uh, when you truly get to the end. Um, so. I guess just getting started, that was the, the background, and it, it's important to have this idea of setting going in your head as we start to paint a picture. Um, as you read a book, I don't know if you're like me, you kind of start creating this painting in your mind. What do these people look like? What's the setting look like? Um, you know, the exposition of the story, you know, if you have you studied the plot structure of a story, exposition is the first step. And then climax and, you know, resolution at the end, uh, we have to spend, this, I think this is the longest chapter in the book, chapter one, the sound of the show, because we have to introduce characters, we have to introduce setting, we have to introduce a uh, time period, you know, a conflict, what potential conflict could there be, and we see it right away you know, with a uh, with potential rift between Jack and, uh, and Ralph, you know, as semi to alpha males you know i guess they would be considered the alpha males here um and so they uh you know we have a lot to talk about a, a lot to share golding does um so that we can care if you skip over the exposition and this is what i was saying earlier if you just read spark notes and and that we they used to be called cliff notes when i was little summarized versions you'll never care about the people and so it's truly vital for you to uh to just 
soak it in and paint this picture so that uh, when the action happens around the island, you have some sort of an idea as to, um, you know, what's truly going on. Um, names. Oh, we were talking about this earlier, and I don't know if you've, you've nor you shared, shared this with your students. You asked me about Piggy's name. Did you guys talk about this at all on your uh, own? No, we haven't actually. We have? We haven't talked about this yet. No, we haven't. Okay. Uh, do you, can we talk? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, you asked me a question last couple well, a few days last week. Um, why why did he name him Piggy? And you always felt really bad about having to refer to this kid as Piggy, knowing how much uh, yeah, emotional true. damage it's causing this fictional character, right? And I was thinking about it in my reading of it. If you find those pages, and I'm not even going to give you the page, but uh, you know how Piggy's always asking, he asked Ralph, what's your name? And he, and he said, Ralph, and then Piggy, wait, he wants to be asked, and he doesn't. And eventually, Ralph does, you know, well, well, what's your name? Piggy has an opportunity to share his name, but he doesn't. So I found that he could have called himself Steve or Rick or whatever. You know, but he was like, well, as long as they don't call me, it's almost like I don't I don't want to say he wanted to be called Piggy, but his identity was always that. And also, how do none of these kids know each other? Are they a bunch of schools evacuated? How did they never bump in? Nobody knows anybody. Well, Jack and the choir boys know each other, but no one else seems to know each other. I find that very strange, but that might be another plot hole. But um. But Nora, I thought about it with uh, as a, your question as I read it, and um, you know he had an opportunity to be called something else. Now, I <laughs> I grew up with a lot of young men who, uh, when we were kids, they would have nicknames for everybody. I still think that even if he went by Bob, if his name was Bob, that's it's just a random name. I I don't know where it came from. Um, that if his name was Bob, I think he still would have been poked at and prodded at and made fun of, um, you know, as they talk about, you know, they make fun of, you know, calling him fatty and, you know, poking his his stomach and the descriptions of Golding about the little boy being uh, more portly, you know, portly than uh, than other kids. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, that's what, those are just some little random thoughts that I had based on our conversation last week. Um, I, I think that Golding did end up writing that his name was Piggy, but as if we just focus on the character analysis of it, Piggy had a chance to identify himself as anything but Piggy. Um, and he chose not to, you know, he chose it. And uh, he really hold it on that or hold it held on, excuse me, to that uh, resentment with Ralph <laughs> once once Ralph shared it. Um, let's see. Uh, Jack. Another thing with names, Jack Meridu, when they're finding out his name, he doesn't want to be called Jack. His name is Meridu. And it's even written in the book. Meridu said. Um, and then from then on out, it's Jack. But I found that interesting. Because as uh, thinking of the society, the time period, uh, very military in, in military, especially over here, uh, it's by your rank, you know, captain, a corporal, lieutenant, whatever those are. Um, but it's always your last name. So they would not have called Jack. Hey, Jack, come here. It would have been Meridu. Get over here. You know, and him identifying by no, I'm Meridu. I'm in charge of the choir. I think that's just a little and it's really only like three lines that it happens and i've never noticed it before if i did i forgot about it 10 years ago but just it, it's amazing the more times you go through it the you know you pick up on little things that you never saw before and it goes oh that makes a little bit more sense about jack's character um and that's why i was saying earlier an additional exposure to the material is vital um you know the going over it multiple times um and so, again, with we find these little kids, uh, you know, running around and, and they they are kids and those little ones are, um, you know, playing and running around. Some strip down to their clothes, some pull their pants down and come shuffling out and they never pulled them back up. They just forgot about it. I don't know how you forget about it, but 
these are kids smeared in food. You know, they've already, these little ones, um, they need some sort of um, parental or adult figure around uh, because there you can see that if they were left to make choices, things would not go very well for them. Um, and keep in mind, keep in mind, whether it's from your family, um, you know, your relatives or friends, always just keep in your mind the age group of these particular uh, individuals. Um, let's see here. Some of those ideas. And again, I'm just going by my notes. And so if there's anything you guys want to talk about more, we can talk about it. Um, you know, I guess maybe make a note and, and we can go over it later. Um, so if I skip something that you were like, hey, I'm curious about this or what do you think about that? Um, please bring that up. Um, the conch shell is important. Um, you know, this is one of the, the main symbols of the book. Uh, if you're looking for symbolism throughout, um, you know, this is the one that uh, is law and order. Whoever holds it gets to talk. And we see that tested uh, in the first few chapters, especially when Piggy picks it up, because, you know, Jack does not respect Piggy, but he keeps going. I got the conch shell um, in Britain. I think they call it conch, but over here it's conch. So we, I got the shell. You must listen to me. That's the rule. We have to have rules. Um, and they just really hit that, um, you know, quite, quite a bit. Um, some of the other, so that's one of the decisions that shows maturity. Um, you know, uh, uh, they decide to elect a chief. These kids decide to hold a democratic election where everybody's vote counts as one. Not everybody in America, not everybody's had the right to vote. Women have barely had 100 years with the vote here in America. And these kids in, you know, uh, was it 50? So 70 years ago, you know, they decide we're going to have a vote. Um, and it, that was a really interesting um, thing to see because Jack walks in with his set of guaranteed votes. And then Ralph pretty much gets the votes because he's the one who summoned everybody with the shell, which he wouldn't have except for Piggy. Piggy is one of those. Piggy's almost a symbol of himself, uh, of himself, uh, of any, you know, more than anything else. Um, you know, he's intellect. Uh, they give him the glasses. Um, you know, we have a phrase over here, uh, you know, nerds, glasses. I wear glasses, well, contacts now. But uh, um, they, they make fun of him with the glasses. They make fun of him for being smart. Um, and, and I know that um, as we talked with the name Piggy, there's a lot of compassion that we should have for this particular character. Um, maybe even so more than anybody else. Um, you know, Ralph seems to be the main character. Um, you, you hate to say good guys and bad guys. Um, if, if we use the term protagonist and antagonist. And not every story necessarily has to have a bad guy, but every story with conflict, there is an antagonist. An antagonist, by definition, is one who antagonizes somebody. Um, I had a sister. I do have a sister. When we were kids, she antagonized me. So if I was, a, she annoyed me. She frustrated me. Do you guys have any relatives that frustrate you sometimes? Yeah. You know, they're your antagonist. It does not have to mean a bad guy, okay? A villain, a Darth Vader. It doesn't have to be that. Um, and so, uh, you, uh, you, you know, whether Ralph is the lone protagonist, but he definitely seems to be the leader that we're supposed to follow. But Piggy is the one that I think um, readers with a heart uh, should feel for him because, uh you know, whether it's talking about the fire or the need to explore, you know, all of these different things. Well, I think that he wants to go on the exploration, but they don't let him. Um, but he just has a lot of ideas throughout. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on that as we develop more skills along the way. You know, the development of Simon. Simon starts out as a kid who faints in this chapter. And by the end of chapter three, he's off exploring the island, finding this little hideout, this this little place to to hang out at. Um, and so uh, it's neat to see the evolution of characters. And again, if you don't read the story, you don't care. So things that Piggy does or Simon does or things happen to certain characters, you know, there's no uh, ownership on your part as a reader. Um, and so uh, uh, seeing those growth, seeing the choices they make, it just makes it more fun. It gives you an escape uh, from uh, from life, from your reality to go into this magical world 
um, and uh, go on an adventure. Um, let's see what else. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Oh, there was a cool moment here. And again, uh, it's, this first chapter probably spend more time talking on this than the, the next couple. But uh, the choices, again, that they make that are very mature uh, for their age. Um, the moment that Ralph wins the election, you know, Jack is, you know, he, this is a very, um, gosh, a stressful situation potentially, um, because uh, are they going to respect the vote? Um, what's going to happen? And so Ralph decides, hey, you can be in charge of the hunters. You can be in charge. Um, oh, actually, uh, you get to pick. You get to pick. That's right. Uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? And he goes, we'll be hunters. we be hunters, I guess to play um and we'll see him what happens with that uh, uh, down the road um you know jack likes to stand up and slam his knife into things um as intimidation like challenge me i'm gonna slam it say something say something you know just like that um and i'm imagining it's like a little a little pocket knife you know a little swiss army knife thing but it's something and it's more than what anybody else has. It's so small, it'd be like sharpening a little stick, but it's something. It's not a big old hunting knife, you know, it's nothing like that. Um, but, uh, and there's a fun moment with a, a pig later on. But they decide we got to go on. Uh, you see this in movies, you see this anytime somebody's on an island in books. Um, you know, Robinson Crusoe, a famous shipwreck uh, literature, had to do it. There was a movie, Castaway, with Tom Hanks. I don't know if you're familiar with that movie you know, probably about 20 years ago. Um, the first thing you got to do once you figure out you're safe, you got to climb up to the highest point. Of, you got to find out, is this just an island or is it just a beach? Because if it's just a beach, you can just walk around and keep walking and then find people, find a city or something. And so Jack, Ralph and Simon, they decide, OK, we're going to go up to the highest point And that way we can do a 360 all the way around look and see if uh, it truly is an island, because that changes things. And we have to understand it and know what's going on. The main thing to focus here, yeah, spoiler, it's an island. Um, but there was a moment here, and I don't know if you uh, talk too much about it in class. They're up there with a big boulder, and they just start rocking it and push it, and it just rolls down. And this isn't some small boulder. This is a massive thing that's just wreaking havoc, exploding trees, anything that's in its way. It's just causing a lot of damage. And they're smiling and laughing. But the thing to focus on here, especially since you got the two leaders here, um, is the bonding. And this is a moment where I don't see them as adults. This is a moment where you see just in that moment, they're kids again. Um, and you get to see it when they start to build the fire uh, next chapter. I don't know. It's in the next chapters and one after. Um, but you see. OK, yeah. Yeah. And, and you see those moments where they 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 go back to just being kids and they're playing. You're like, this is what we're talking about. One of the themes of this book, and we'll mention it at the end um, when we're done. Loss of innocence. And, and you can apply this to so many different stories uh, and in real life. Um, think of the kids in Ukraine right now, the stuff that they're going through, loss of innocence. They're being robbed of they're experiencing things they shouldn't experience, you know, and and in this novel, they shouldn't have to uh, make life and death decisions. Um, and as things do. And this is where I wish we were further down the book. But when this story wraps up, I don't know. how, And especially since they, they're there for so long. And look, there are moments throughout, like where it talks about when Jack's hunting and he's smelling the droppings, you know, and it's, ooh, it's still warm, which is disgusting. But you do you, Jack. Um, but they talk about how long his hair is more than, you know, and they talk about how he's thinner and they'll talk about how clothes are falling. So they're there a long time there. It's impossible that these kids are not going to be impacted by something down the road. They're probably going to need therapy you know, the uh, post-traumatic stress, you know, something um, down the road. And that's that loss of innocence. So when we get to see moments of them in their innocence, you're like, oh, that's right. They're kids. Yeah, I probably would have done that too, playing around. And it gives them a, a freedom, an escape from being an adult, 
being adult, as you guys are getting older, there's a lot of stress involved, you know, just a lot of, oh, really, I got to deal with this. Oh, I got to go. I got to pay for this. Oh, I, you know, just so many little things. And so when you can escape and go and do something for me, spend time with my kids, uh, that Star Wars podcast that I just started up, those are escapes that uh, I get to to get away and do. And so with these moments, and again, it was just a moment, but in a chapter of exposition, they are important as a foundation for building an understanding of these characters. Um, so just uh, as you go, and those are the, th- oh, note-taking in books. Um, it's uh, We call them annotating. And I don't know if I can show you really quick. Um, I'll find a good one, Bob. Find one that'll show up on camera. Okay. I don't know. Uh, Can you see that there's some underlining? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's color. I wrote in the margins a little bit. Um, And you can come up with your own theory of things. I underline key lines because when I taught on the videos, I reference the book and I read some lines. Ooh, look at this line when they say this. And I don't have it meant well. I kind of had it memorized back then, but not anymore. Um, but key moments, key descriptions. This moment here, I would have had circled and talked about, um, maybe put a little star, you know, of importance. Um, because when you give an analysis in writing, people ask your opinion on something. You know, are you more a fan of Jack or Ralph? Are you team jack or team ralph and why that's where it's not just your opinion you need to back it up with textual evidence support from the book and so it helps to jump back and skim and find where you made little notes it gives you another option to of uh exposure to the content that i talked about and it truly does help over time um uh you know in order to to help with your uh level of understanding so um let's see where are we at um oh coming back from the top of the mountain we're almost done with the chapter uh excuse me real quick uh top of the mountain they start heading back down and they come across the pig um and this was really interesting um because they they trap it they're about ready to you know have a shot at killing it jack pulls out his knife if you want to call it a knife whatever is his stabby pokey thing is so he pulls that out and this is a really telling part okay a lot of foreshadowing that happens here um but also it establishes yeah they are just kids jack can talk all the big game he wants but they are just kids as of right now. And so he pulls the blade up, but he doesn't stab down at the pig. He doesn't kill it. And there's a line here that said uh, the pause was only long enough for them to understand what an enormity the downward stroke would be. So he knows, yeah, I could bring it down, but I'd be taking a life. I would be killing. I, I don't do that. I'm just, I'm in charge of the choir because I can hit a high C note. What sort of, <laughs> seriously, authority is given because who can sing the, a high C? Um, but that's where, what was important, you know, in that, uh, in his group of people. But they knew, you know, and he can talk all he wants, but you got to actually do it. And uh, in order to save, uh, to save face, to not be embarrassed, Um, You know, when Ralph asks him, you know, why didn't you kill it? Jack slams his knife into a tree trunk again, and he says next time and then done with the first chapter. And so that's one of the things that uh, you see Jack. um, Well, as that kid, but you have society, you have, you know, you shouldn't take this life or kill this thing or or he hasn't any uh he doesn't have any experience doing it he's all talk and next time it's going to be different but at this particular moment first chapter we need to just soak it in we need to download all of this information that golding wants to send our way and uh that's that's a big one 
because Jack has been the, 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 the most aggressive. Let's go with that word. The most aggressive person so far. Um, and to see a weakness of his and a weakness he acknowledges, but he says he will not repeat it. It will not happen uh, again. It will not happen again. Can I um, you for a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the book, if you notice how the narrator always gives us something. So here he says, next time there will be no mercy. And this is the, the narrator himself or herself, because we don't know whether the narrator is a man or a woman. Uh, how can we link that to the theme? Like, how, like, if, if we go along the chapters and we see how the narrator uh, sometimes gives us details that and he wouldn't otherwise know unless he's one of the characters, but he's still, you know, not a character. And, and I say that because at the beginning, uh, we don't know the names. Usually narrators tell us the names. Mm. He keeps calling uh, the, the, the boy with the fair hair, and he keeps calling Piggy the fat boy. And then here he says, next time there will be no mercy. So um, how do we feel about the narrator? Can we trust the narrator? Can we trust him? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, as a narrator. But usually, you yeah, know, um, narration is, is more you know, trusted than first person narration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, I it would be interesting to see this book in a different um, perspective. Um, you know, if it was solely from from Ralph's point of view. You know, where he is the, or Piggy, that could have been interesting. You know, that could be a fun writing activity. And I think I did a journal at one point, you know, take a moment, any moment from the story and write it from a, one character's perspective, um, because then we wouldn't know anything at all unless it was spoken, you know, out, uh, you know, other than that first character, that main character. Um, I think at this particular point, you know, we, we do trust and we have to trust um you know uh, whether we see uh you know all truths and and i wouldn't say lies but maybe some faults um you know of certain characters you know golding is pumping jack up to be one thing but then he's not that or at least not that yet and as he acknowledges next time um so it shows uh humanity is faulty <laughs> you know and and uh, with the children um, as the, the story goes on, we, we forget that they are children, but the rules of humanity still apply to children. Um, and so I'm not quite sure if I, I, I don't know if I've given a great answer, um, but I, I, I trust I, I trust where we're at. I don't feel anything being lied about um, later in the story. There could be when it gets a little darker. Um, do you know what I'm kind of getting at, Nor? You know, you get a little bit further along, there could be some interesting discussions uh, pertaining to uh, some of the things that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys, do, do you want to pause? Is there anything you want to talk about in uh, chapter one? We didn't. We can just go chapter by chapter. We just, since the next two are shorter. Uh, okay, sure. But can we like focus on the themes because we need to get to the question and answer sessions? So can we, oh. you know, take it? In by theme instead of chapter by chapter? Uh, we we can. I kind of walked, uh, you know, had something kind of walking through, but, uh, you know, yeah, what do you get? What what would you like to jump to? Is there something you want to make sure you get? I think we already talked about loss of innocence. And I think the last line you mentioned about how next time there would be like, it, it would be different. I think this is how we see Jack changing from this young boy who looks like he's brave and looks like he's capable of killing into a young boy who's like in charge, I don't want to spoil things, but he's in charge yeah. of an entire gang that goes about and hunts, but does not hunt animals. So maybe we can go through yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, gosh, there's so much. It's okay, spoil things for them. It's their fault. I, no, I can't do that. <laughs> It's their fault because then, then I would have lied and I can't do that. I just no. there's a lot of different kinds of hunting. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Um, you, OK. And uh, with the hunting at the beginning, um, you know, that they weren't really hunting when they stumbled on that pig. But the action of, oh, here's an opportunity and you fail. 
And as we see him, it, is it, I think it's the third chapter where he's more animal like. OK, um, and we talk about, uh, you know, some of the themes of uh, civilization, you know, uh, um, savagery turning to savages. Um, there's some, you know, whether it's through their their longer hair or their ratty clothes ripping. Um, there's something really interesting uh, with regards to, uh, you know, turning, uh, losing your perspective in your way. Um, take note as you go through this story of language and memory uh there's a little boy i i think he's a little one um his name's percival if i remember right i don't think it's in the first three chapters um but percival and then i'll spoil this this is nothing um but percival when they ask him his name um you know my i remember when i was a kid and i went to school my folks had me memorize our phone number and address so I could say my whole name and address and phone number. So if I ever got, I don't know, lost, somebody, somebody found me, they could, I could spout this off. And so Percival spouts off his address and where he's from and his full name. But over the course of the book, uh, he starts forgetting it. And if I remember correctly, even at the very end, he almost even forgets his name. Um, that's just how things fall apart, um, you know, and, and how much time has passed, um, you know, uh, and some of the stuff with regards to themes and conflicts, um, you know, it's very much, um, you know, we, we talk about uh, uh, man versus man, you know, where, where you have two people fighting, you know, or man versus nature, like the movie Castaway that I reference, you know, it's just one man stuck on an island against the elements, okay, against nature. Um, but man versus self is one that I think is very important for this book. Excuse me. So as you, um, you know, as you go through the book, it might be nice to keep a chart as to, um, you know, the different moments and how they fall in the conflict chart. Um, like I said, man versus self, uh, you know, thinking in because, oh, we didn't even talk about it, but like the beasties, they talk about the beasties, I think, in the next chapter, um, you know, and all of a sudden they have the presence of something else on the island because they established that there's nobody else on the island. It's uninhabited from what they could see on top of the mountain. Yes, there are things to hunt and pigs and things like that, but all of a sudden there could be something hunting them on the island and that creates a lot of fear for people and everybody processes fear in a different way so that's a that's a big one that i keep focus on as you move forward nor is there something next maybe we can move to the question answer session uh that would be well yeah that sounds wonderful or if you'd like us to first discuss like before the question answer maybe we can start the discussion on two parts if there were grown-ups and if there were women or girls on the island, what would go differently? I would love to know what you guys think. You know, my opinions are just, you know what I mean? There's nothing bounding them to authority at all. Um, you know, I, I'd be curious. Have you guys come up with kind of a, a general idea or is everybody uh, differing in their own opinions? Okay, so this is a question to everyone. Uh, again. I don't want to spoil what happened, but at some point, the boys start getting into trouble. They start, you know, uh, they, they, they're, they're turning to groups and they start going against each other and so on. So the question is, if, and we know that all of the characters are boys, what would go differently if there were women on the island, if there were females? And what would go differently if they were all females? Huh? What do you think? <laughs> they would fight over the women. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what do you think? Yes. Please come in. Come here. Yeah. Can you hear us well? You can't no. Hear. You can't hear us? Okay. Hello. Hi. What's your question? What do you think is going to happen? Um, I think uh, they will uh, become uh, or uh, think smartly to uh, 
live uh, together in uh, like what happening in uh, just uh, films and uh, the movies uh, that they will uh, uh, rescue maybe or mm. they will uh, work together to think smartly and how uh, they uh, gonna live and uh, uh, maybe they will uh, uh, build a house or a home <laughs> on the yeah. trees like uh, of the uh, big trees and the, like the movies yeah i think that so basically no i think saying- yeah, i think you have a it sounds like a great story uh i think that if they get rescued you want to make like if is it going to be too late you know are they going to uh turn to uh too much chaotic will they even be able to be recognizable as the disciplined english kids that they were the well-structured kids um so that's something to keep an eye on as the the story ramps up yeah Yeah, for sure so basically she's saying that if there were girls on the island oh oh yeah oh i'm see i forgot what the question was (laughs) houses yes you know what let me just say I don't have an answer for this, but the smartest people, the most organized people that I've ever met are, it's not men. So I think a lot, a lot would get done. I, th- I would love to watch this story with just women. Um, you know, I think you're right on. I think, I, I bet their huts would be better. And, and it talks about Ralph, he spent two days and it's barely standing. You know what? No, you guys, you'd handle it. Um, I have no doubt, but uh, it would be really interesting. And I heard somebody joking back there that they would fight for the women or, or, or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think back, you know, in fifth or sixth grade, did boys and girls, did they see each other as opposite sex? You know what I mean? Where there with attractions weren't there. They might've been a little flirting, but everybody, you know, maybe that was later. If this was high school, I taught high school for 15 years. I know about hormones and stuff in high school. That would have been nuts. You know, just a Lord of the Flies high school version. Um, but uh, I know now that I remember the question, I, I really like what uh, I liked your idea. That would have been a good, good, a good read. I think if they were all women, I think they would have fought too. Like if all of them were women. Yeah, they mm-hmm. would have, the, the girls among themselves. Yeah, of course they would fight and kill each other <laughs> probably I, I, sooner I than this... the boys probably See, sooner than the yeah so hello mr bob or bob's fine hi um i actually watched the two versions of the movie and read the whole novel so there's nothing to spoil for me but i'm afraid to spoil oh, good them. yeah 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 be careful be careful okay the question was what, what would be different if all of them were women um mm. i think women were would care a lot about or care mostly about being rescued than getting used to living in an inhabited island i mean we saw how the kids the first thing they thought about was taking off their clothes and jumping in this in the beach and swimming and stuff right uh, i personally as a girl if i was thrown in an island inhabited island all alone i would freak out yeah Honestly, I wouldn't think about just swimming and this stuff. So I think women would be more organized, caring a lot about being rescued. I mean, we saw how they're made up rules. They made, I don't want to say fake, but made up. It started to fall apart real quick. They they forgot about Jack's rules and keeping the fire and wanting to be rescued. They, right. Yeah. They went after Jack, who got the meat. Jack got the power as getting the meat. So they're now getting uh start to think how to get used to living there so i think women wouldn't be like that that's one that, that's one. that's fantastic i have no doubt they would be very goal oriented and yeah. focused and it's like listen we're not gonna play around we're not gonna do this stuff we're gonna get yeah 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 and i thought it was very mature of them to to say we need to get a smoke yeah. we made a fire but we need to make smoke it needs to be up top so we can see it the ideas but they just i think they lack the maturity and the that you're saying would be on the island and i agree that uh 
you know, women would be more focused. And I don't know if that's being, you know, I, I don't want to say that it's not being sexist, but I just, I, I, I value, you know, what you're saying. And I'm thinking straight up, you're right. It would be much like that. I don't want to generalize, but women, yeah. I mean, normally we don't seek power. Like the kids were, Ralph, for example, didn't um, ask to be a leader. He was chosen. He was given that position. But for yeah. women, Jack, as the other way, he wanted that. But for women, I, I think, I just, I believe it would be different. This one. I got a question for you real quick. Okay. Um, of the characters, who is the most female-like in those qualities, would you say, from the story? Simon. He was a unique, kind boy. I mean, I love that character. Simon. I would I, go for Piggy. Yeah. I would go for Piggy. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, as one of the main, the mainer. Yeah, yeah. I he's the one trying to keep them on track, right? He's yeah. the one kind of coming up with ideas and trying to keep them goal oriented. Actually, uh, Piggy was like the head and shoulder. He was. He had all the answers. They did the work. He did the the thinking. Yeah, those were the two I was thinking of as well. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing. And uh, please do not spoil it for them. Let uh, them go on that journey. I Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I also wanted to like maybe we could discuss the concept of democracy when we started talking about voting. Now, yeah. did it make sense for a voting to go that way? I mean, sh like, shouldn't there have been certain criteria? Like you said, having the C note wasn't enough to make a leader. And having the conk wasn't enough to make Ralph a reader, especially that he was not the one to find it. And at the beginning, he didn't know how to use it, right? Yeah, he had, yeah, he had to be shown, right? Without yeah, Piggy. Yeah, yeah, without Piggy, he wouldn't have called in anyone. And Piggy was the one to call for everyone's information and names. And he was the one to tell them, let's start building a shelter. So I think that it tells us something about politics. And maybe I might go extreme here and say that we are shown those leaders, the presidents and everyone in charge and in control, that they're there because they have certain attributes that should not be the attributes of a leader. And even though um, I'm against the whole process of voting, I think if we go along the novel, we see that Jack would have made a better leader. And and personally, I, I really vote for him as a leader. Why? Because if you go along the novel again, you see that he's the one who's making the tough calls. And when one of the kids, the one with a scar, he said that uh, he saw a beastie. Yeah. Jeff yeah. denied it. I think that that was the representation of, of presidents who denied the existence of a problem. You have a kid who says he saw a beast. And he can say, no, he didn't. There's no beast. There's no, be there's no beast. But then here we go with Jack. Jack was like, if there's one, we'll kill it. So I think that makes up a better leader because, yeah, okay, of course he's horrible and how he treated Biggie was horrible and so on. But again, I think the qualities that we need in someone who would make decisions suit Jack better. I felt that Ralph was always questioning things, you know? Not you, I guess you gotta, you gotta remember what's the goal? What's the end yeah. game, right? And I think that that is a wonderful uh, students. Did you see how she this is something I have not heard of, uh, you know, taking Jack and supporting him as leader just because he is that antagonist. So you're kind of going to the dark side with this. And I love it because she used all of this evidence that we talked about, whatever your opinion is, as long as you back it up with textual support, it can't be wrong. Because look, this is just my opinion based on based on what's in here. You know, it's not me just making stuff up. See, here in America, we had a president a few years ago who I don't know if you were aware, just kind of made stuff up. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> to make America great again. <laughs> my gosh. It's fun. But he did make America great again, you know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't want to go into that stuff. But anyways, uh, I really loved what you had to say about Jack. You know, some of the tough decisions you can't, uh, you know, ignore. You got to jump right out and and have a plan. Um, 
I guess Jack would have been the end of, even though he's in charge of just choir boys, right? Yeah. It's just choir kids, but you see how they march around, right? You see how they um, deal, you know, how they uh, uh, have authority figures, Jack. Um, and so he has more experience. He might have been the safer choice. And with the democracy aspect, since you brought that up, everybody gets a vote. Why should the kid who can't even pull his pants up? Exactly. Why should they get a vote? Why should why should that? But then we come up. Well, <laughs> and this. No, it's a great discussion and debate. So only 10 years and up only kids who understand what a vote is. You know, and uh, that can be really uh, an interesting discussion. But for these kids setting up their own little government really quick, I think that's just the first one that jumps. OK, everybody gets a vote. Raise your hands. Who wants to, you know, have pizza for lunch? Who wants to have chicken for lunch? You know, they're they're used to just raising their hands and whoever has the most wins. And, yeah. um, and that, it's but actually- that's not the idea of <laughs> that's not the best idea necessarily and again retroactively we can say that this isn't a good idea we've yeah. seen the story <laughs> you know what i mean so i loved your your idea about that that's very fascinating and regarding what you said uh ralph said that we're going to raise our hands the way we do at school he actually references that so yeah it makes sense yeah, yeah. we have a student with a question too yes please please I don't know how, how much more time do you have? I have plenty, but I, I don't know how much you guys have. We have like 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Do you, you just control us. Okay. Nor so that uh, we get whatever you need us to do. Yeah. Women power and all. Right. Oh, right, right on, man. Yeah. Anyone has a question? If, if, I think if you would like to ask, like, not only related to the novel about how to study literature, right. You can help us answer such questions. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Dad. So we have a student. Fantastic. Come on down. I have smart students. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're very lucky. So first of all, hello. It's the big honor to be here with you. Uh, there's something that I really um, was curious about. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first three chapters of the novel. Um, there was many evidences. I wrote them in my novel, but I can't really pick it. Uh, Ralph didn't want to be the uh, the alpha of the group of these boys, but um, after they summoned the other boys uh, with the shell, and uh, um, he was the one who told the group that his name is Piggy. He, he, he like stole his chance of telling his name. Yes. Um, can we say that this has something to do with the uh, Ralph knew that Piggy was a smart boy, he was intelligent, he was the one who told him how to use um, the shell to call the other people. Does this have anything that Ralph didn't want anyone to be better than him in front of the other boys? That is a fantastic question. That um, I think that goes, remember when we were talking about this a bit ago, that I think regardless of Piggy's name, he still would have been made fun of right because he was different he was fat he was nerdy he was what he was everything that that jack and stuff wasn't i gosh if i thought about this 10 years ago i forgot it so fantastic observation these are little boys and i would agree that ralph was not somebody who sought power and sometimes good leaders in movies they don't seek you know, these uh, authoritative positions, but it's thrust upon them, right? And they have to take charge because they're the best fit. But I I could see that. I could see totally Ralph acting like a kid, acting like when they're p- putting wood on and him and Jack are smiling at each other or pushing a rock down a hill. I totally could agree that uh, he is, um, you know, putting down Piggy to make himself feel better. You know, um, so... I guess Ralph is a bully, no different than Jack, at least in that issue. You know what I mean? In, in that particular moment. Um, yeah. Interesting. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to just, I noticed that in uh, chapter one that 
uh, even you said that uh, Biggie is uh, like uh, they are in a comedian way to just uh, to have a just to smile or have a, to laugh about this name or in a com comedian way but I think uh, this is um, a real uh, maybe a real message to just for bullying in the children this is uh, so uh, uh, happening in the school that uh, there is the uh, pulling with the children and uh, this uh, a good uh, message to uh, stop bullying and uh, oh, Biggie yeah. <laughs> just uh, Biggie is just uh, really I I just noticed what's the real name I want to know Daniel. we all want to know <laughs> <laughs> I want to know <laughs> so yeah Piggy Piggy knows but Piggy's not sharing. You know, maybe it's some name that he just doesn't really like. You know, maybe it's a name that could be both a girl and a boy. And, you know, there's a name, uh, Leslie, you know, that could be a man or a woman, you know, over here. And maybe he would doesn't want to go that name because he'll be ridiculed. But you're right. Bullying. This is a and this think again, this is a 70 year old book and bullying was present. And we still see this in schools. You know, so it is a representation of kids um, of that age, but it still stinks, you know, and it still is like, come on, look at the damage. Look at the damage that it's doing to this kid, um, especially later in the book. It gets worse. Yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. I would like to add a final note before we finish up. And I always thought about this, like. He could have gone, like the bad name could have been Fatty, for example. So I think part of calling him Piggy and the fact that we have Jack hunting pig, and maybe that just foreshadowed. Oh! Yeah, I did just spoil the thing. For yeah! That. It's no, fine. that's a great... So they're hunting pigs, and they're going to hunt Piggy. Just another pig, you know, to kill. Yeah. Totally. I never made that connection with all the pigs on the island. I mean, this, I, I don't know, maybe I was just trying to be really deep as I read it and I didn't see it at face value that they're hunting pigs and he's called piggy. And then, you know, they keep jabbing at his stomach and poking at him, whether it's figuratively or literally, they they're trying to stick the piggy, you know? <laughs> yeah. So just, you know, again, at yeah. some point, their vision was too blurry to distinguish between a human and a pig. Uh, yeah. And without spoiling it, but uh, nor this is very similar to when they're doing their fire dance on the Island. Yes. You know, uh, and that's where you can have a great conversation at that point because things change forever at that moment. Okay. So I think we should. A big round of applause, a big round of applause, and like a hundred and plus new fans, huh? Oh, okay, guys, this was awesome. This was the best use of my morning. I mean, yeah, I could have slept a little bit more, but you can sleep when you're dead. You know what I mean? This is, this is awesome. Yeah. This has been a true treat and a pleasure. Um, you guys, your, your insight, the questions, um, you know, what your professor shared with me, you guys are very intelligent young women who I, I have no doubt are going to be very, very successful um, in whatever you do. But please, please read the book and talk about it. And uh, those that have seen a movie, books are sometimes different than movies, um, you know, uh, especially the 1990 movie version. It's a little bit different. So uh, but anyways, enjoy it. Enjoy it. And uh, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good day. Thanks, Nor. I appreciate it. I'll send you the recorded video, okay? Okay. Yeah, let's uh, connect later on email or something. Just chat if you need to. Okay. See ya. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>